16th, I am reading from the 16th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. And I'm going to use verse 17 as a text. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. And in my name they shall speak with new tongues. Now you can go on and read the rest of it if you'd like to. But I want to preach a message on the wonderful name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 9 it says, And His name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. Counselor. Prince of Peace. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. But I kind of like the name of Jesus. I use the name. When I pray, I always pray, Father, in Jesus' name. And I'm guaranteed an audience with my Father because I've got the name of Jesus to use. Can you shout praise the Lord somebody? There's something about a name. You can travel down the highway and almost every truck got a sign on it. I was following a truck once and I passed it and it said the greatest name in pies. Mrs. Smith's. Made in my backyard in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. You've seen it. If you travel the country, you know that name. But so many put, so many people put a lot of weight in the name. Whether it be pies or whether it be the automobile you drive. There's something about a name. And I'm not here to give publicity to any automobile manufacturer. But there's something about a name. When you lady go shopping, you go shopping for a name brand. Buying a name. And there's something about the name of Jesus that I love. Can you shout praise the Lord with me somebody? There's power in a name. There's influence in a name. I don't mind advertising this one because I believe the church has failed to get this name around the world. The world got more sense than God's people do. You can go and preach the gospel in every nook and corner in the world and there's one name that you can see above any other name and that's the name of Coca-Cola. There's something about a name. He's in every country. He's in every village. And I believe the name of Jesus should be carried to every country, into every village, into every hamlet because there's power in the name of Jesus. Can you shout praise the Lord with me somebody? Hallelujah! The greatest name in this universe is debased on the job. In the homes, behind closed doors, even on television and on radio. But that name is a precious name to the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is power in that name. It's the badge of a Christian authority. This is the thing that Jesus left us as His believers. And that is His name. Can you shout Amen somebody? Even after His resurrection, before He ascended to His Father, these were the last words that He left with His disciples. He gave them a commission. Generally the last words are the most important words that you can recall. I'll never forget when I was at the dying bedside of my mother, I can remember my mother's last words. Her last words are deeply imprinted in my heart. I can still hear her crying, not for more life, because she lived a full life. But her six kids that surrounded that bed while she was dying, she cried out, Oh God, you promised me you was going to save all my children. These were her dying words, crying out to God to fulfill His promise that you shall be saved and your household. And she passed on to her reward without seeing that promise met. But thank God today I got good news to report. 
that every member of her family is saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah! I come to tell you there's power in the name of Jesus. Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah! Jesus left that name with us. And we have the right to use it. There's a lot of God's people that are ashamed to use that name. But I love that name. Say it one more time with me. Everybody say it out loud. This has gone on radio around the world. And I want the world to hear the people in Detroit use the name that's above every name. Shout it one more time. There's something about that name that I love. Can you shout amen, somebody? There is power in the name of Jesus. Some people like to drop names in political circles. I know so and so. But I want you to know I know who Jesus is. When the Republicans get together, all they can do is get their top man there. But when Christians get together, they can have pastors, they can have prophets, they can have evangelists, but they're not the top man. When Christians gather together, we gather together in the greatest name that ever was, and that name is the name of Jesus, and there's power in that name. Can you shout amen, somebody? Power to open blind eyes. Power to unstop deaf ears. Power to raise the dead. Power in the name of Jesus. And this is the badge that He has given to every one of us. And Satan is commanded to respect that name. I said the devil is even charged and commanded to respect the authority of that name. He signed the deed with His atoning blood. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown Him Lord of all. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm connected with the name of Jesus. When we assemble together, we're not alone. But Jesus is in the midst of us. Hallelujah. He's in the hospital room. And when the doctors can't do anything for you, you are prayed for and hands are laid on you in the name of Jesus. And there's power in that name that brings divine health into the body of the believer. I'm talking about the name of Jesus. That wonderful name of Jesus. And I love that name. Before we leave this place tonight, we're going to use that name. We're going to pray the Father. And we're going to use the name of Jesus. And I believe people are going to come out of wheelchairs tonight. I believe that blind eyes are coming open tonight. I believe that you're going to have your home put back together tonight. I believe God's going to meet that financial situation that you're involved in. God's going to put you back in business because there's power in that name. The name of Jesus is going to deliver you from alcohol. The name of Jesus will deliver you from walking the streets. The name of Jesus will set you free from drug addiction. The name of Jesus will stop you from going to hell and put you on the road to heaven. He'll transform you by His power because there's power in the name of Jesus. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord somebody? Oh, hallelujah. St. Mark's Gospel chapter 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. Shout the name again. One more time. In my name. He said you shall cast out devils in that name and I want you to know beloved in the book of Philippians I found something where that name influences three different worlds there's power in that name and I want to read it to you from Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 
but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Underline it in your Bible. God hath given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in the heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can you shout praise the Lord somebody? I said every knee got to bow. Every knee in heaven. Every knee on earth. And every knee under the earth. Hallelujah. That name has influenced three worlds. It influences the angels in heaven. It influences all of mankind on earth. And it influences every demon spirit that ever was created in hell. Can you shout amen? And God has given us that name to use. In that name you shall cast out devils. Can you shout praise the Lord? And I come to your city to tell you I believe in that name. Let me paint you a picture of Jesus dying on Calvary where He influenced three worlds while He was hanging on Golgotha's hill suspended between heaven and earth nails in His hands and His feet a crown of thorns that pierced His brow the Roman soldier that took the spear and thrust it into His side blood mingled with water gushing out signifying that He died of a broken heart on Golgotha's brow, the captain in charge of the crucifixion stood there while he saw him die. And finally, his own testimony was, Truly, this was the Son of God. He didn't believe Him, but because he saw something, it made a believer out of Him. I love the name of Jesus. I believe this is one time in the history of the church that nobody was demon-possessed. I have no Bible to prove that, but i just like to believe that myself. I won't throw that out for doctrine. But I believe this is one time in the history of the world nobody was demon-possessed because I believe every devil that there ever was was around Calvary. And they were watching Him die there. Because nobody destroyed the works of the devil like Jesus did. No man ever performed miracles like Jesus did. He brought havoc to the kingdom of the devil. And I believe every demon spirit stood there wringing their hands with a smile on their face saying, we got him now. But they don't know it, but he's about to seal their doom. Jesus was born to die. Can you shout amen, somebody? I come to tell you the Jews didn't kill Jesus. The Roman soldier didn't kill Jesus. They ain't nobody could kill him. Jesus said, this one thing I received from my father, he gave me power to lay my life down. And he gave me power to take it back up again. Jesus died and poured out his life for you and for me. But thank God he took it back up again. He is no longer dead. He's not on the cross. He came out of the grave. Jesus is alive and He lives in me. Shout yes! Now I was going to try to be dignified tonight. But I'm feeling this thing all over me tonight. Somebody say Jesus. Listen to me. When Jesus died on Calvary, He went to hell to preach. Now, I don't mind coming to Detroit, but I don't want to go to hell to preach. I don't mind preaching in New York City. I don't mind going to Haiti, but I don't want to go to hell. Jesus went to hell to preach. The righteous demands of a just God had to be satisfied. His blood had to be sprinkled on the mercy seat. At His resurrection, Mary wanted to embrace Him and touch Him. But He said, Mary, don't touch me yet. I have not yet ascended to my Father. His blood, that 
precious blood had to be taken into the Holy of Holies. It had to be sprinkled on the mercy seat. God the Father would either accept or reject the sacrifice that was made on Calvary. And I want you to know, all heaven got the news. The name of Jesus influences three worlds. Heaven got the news. God shut the sun off for three hours. It came darkness, came on the face of the earth while Jesus was hanging on that cross. Earth got the news. The rocks rent. The earth quaked. The wall in the holy place was torn from the top to bottom. Hallelujah. God's letting the world know you don't need a priest no more. You don't need a rabbi no more. But your high priest has entered into the holy of holies. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father where he makes intercession for you. Woo! Heaven got the news. Earth got the news. Now hell's going to get it. And if you're here tonight and you're afraid of the devil, get ready. You're going to put the devil where he belongs and that's right under your feet. Because we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. The devil is defeated. He ain't got no power. The name of Jesus got the power. You're a child of God. God's given you the badge of authority. There's power in the name of Jesus. Paul gives us a story of while he's in hell. He says he was overcome by principalities and powers. These hordes of hell ganged up on him. And it looked like they had him. But when heaven got the news, earth got the news, and now hell's going to get it. And the Bible said Jesus. Say Jesus one more time. Jesus threw off principality. And he threw off power to get rid of those little demon spirits. And he marched up to old Lucifer himself. He said, I want the number one biggie. You're the one I'm after. Hallelujah. Walked right up to him. Took the vesture from him in which he trusted. Took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he unlocked the cells of all the departed saints of God. And the Bible said he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto the children of men. He made a show of the devil openly. Put him where he belonged. In the face of heaven. In the face of earth. And in the face of hell. Everybody knows the devil is destroyed. The devil is whipped. Jesus Christ put him where he belongs. And that's under your feet. And greater is he that is in you. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. Oh hallelujah. I come to tell you there's power in that name. There's power in that name. When I hear men using that name in the curse, I like to lay hands on them and say, In the name of Jesus. You can cuss him out if you want to, but I cast out devils in that name. I open blind eyes in that name. I unstop deaf ears in that name. I see the lame walk in that name. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 This is real, beloved. Tonight I'm going to use that name and invoke it in a prayer for every one of you that are in need. And you're going to see the power of that name. The power of that name, the name of Jesus, is going to break every yoke. It'll destroy sin. It'll deliver you from drugs. It'll set you free from habit. Raise your hands and shout Amen. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall cast out devils. I want you to know, beloved, that that is a powerful name. Not only is it a powerful name, but it's a saving name. A lot of folks like to see miracles take place. But the greatest miracle is when God can save a soul. And deliver him from his past life. There's power in that name. I'll never forget, Brother Miles, I'll never forget when I went to India back in 1958. 
I was sponsoring a missionary full time in the church that I pastored. Until he came home on furlough and told our church that he spent 30 years in India and never saw one saved. A poor investment. So when I went to India, I was looking forward to it. We had crowds in 58, up to 100,000 people. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. I preached my heart out through an interpreter. The Malayalam tongue in southern India, in Tiravala. Gave the altar call out of 100,000 people. Not one of them come to get saved. And I said, now I know what that missionary is talking about. But when you get done preaching the gospel, you're not done. When I got finished, I said, now Holy Ghost, it's your meeting. Now it's time to heal the sick and to cast out devils. I picked out a blind man that everybody knew and brought him to the platform. Picked a deaf mute man out. Everybody knew. Couldn't hear or talk. Fifty some years of age. Never heard a word. Picked another little lady out that walked in a horizontal position on her heels of her hands and the heels of her feet. She never stood upright. And these were all professional beggars. Nobody left. They were all looking. I said, I just gave an altar call and you refused to come to him. All we have to show is the empty tomb of Jesus because he is no longer there, but Jesus is alive. And I said, I'm going to show you, every one of you people believe he was a prophet. And I'm going to show you that he's still alive today because what he did yesterday, he's going to do today. The blind man is going to see. And I laid hands on him in the name of... That's the name I used. In the name of Jesus, I commanded the blind eyes to open. And instantly the man's eyes began to see. And he ran all over that compound, hollering in the Malayalam language, I can see, I can see, I can see. The deaf mute, I put my fingers in his ears and put my thumb on the tongue. And I said, in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, the name that's still alive today as it was 2,000 years ago, I command the deaf and dumb spirit, come out! And instantly his ears popped and he started to talk for the first time in 57 years. Ha uh-huh. Now I come to the lady in the horizontal position. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my interpreter came right out with the same thing in the Malayalam language. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I waited for him to say it in his own language. And the moment he said it, the woman stretched out and got up for the first time in 58 years and walked in a vertical position in the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me? I didn't have to give an altar call now. Thousands of people come running to the front. I thought they were after me. And they were hollering in their own language. And I said to my interpreter, what are they hollering? They said they're hollering, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. We come to accept Jesus. He is alive. And I come to tell you that this is the only name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. There is no other way. The Catholic Church can't save you. The Protestant Church can't save you. The Virgin Mary can't save you. Mr. Moon can't save you. you got to go higher than the moon. you got to get to the sun. The S-O-N. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. My God, from God. I'm feeling this tonight. Mm. I am reading from the 16th chapter of Mark 
And I'm using this as a text. And these signs shall follow them that believe in My name. They shall cast out devils. Now I'm just going to stop there because this particular point, I'm going to call it a delivering name. Cast out devils. But before I get into the devil aspect of it, I believe that this name, after the Holy Ghost was given on Pentecost... Peter and John used that name to deliver people from sickness and disease and infirmity. And it's not only for the preacher, but it's for the believer. How many believers do I have here? This ain't television, this is radio. Shout at me. How many believers do I have here? That's more like it. Peter and John, after they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the story is recorded in the third chapter of Acts. Read it in your devotional time. They were headed for the church at the hour of prayer. And when they got there, there was a man who was laid at the gate beautiful, who was lame from his mother's womb. Never walked in his life. And his mama and his papa put him at that spot. That was a good spot. He made a good living at the church. Because God's people will give you something. Peter and John, two Holy Ghost filled men of God, were walking by. And I believe they were talking about that Holy Ghost power. And they ignored the man's plea as he held up his cup. And he said, alms for the poor. And Peter and John were too busy talking about Holy Ghost power. And they went on by him and finally John stopped him and said, hold it Pete, wait a minute. He said, what is this we got the other day? Holy Ghost man, Holy Ghost. He said, didn't Jesus tell us that the works that he did shall you do also? Peter said, yeah, he said that. Didn't he say that we could put it to work now that he's gone to the Father and all we had to do was use his name and bring deliverance to people? He said, he sure enough said it. He said, then how come we went by that man back there? Let's back up and lay one on him. Now, you don't mind me using my own vernacular here, but it it makes it a little more real to me. And Peter and John backed up. And can you imagine this man sitting there for alms, recognizing two men that went by and didn't even give him a dime, and then all of a sudden they come back. He's looking for something now. Alms for the poor? Alms? And Peter looked at him and said, Silver and gold have I none. He sure sounds like a preacher, don't he? But he said, such as I have, give I unto thee. He says, I don't have what you want, but I'm going to give you what you need. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Something about that name, beloved. Now the man didn't get up. That man didn't get up. He sat there as if looking at these two saying, What are you, two crazy guys? I ain't walked in my life. What's wrong with you? What do you think I'm out here begging alms for? I've been lame from my mother's womb. Peter said, I ain't got no time to argue with you, man. And he reached down and got him by the hand. He said, I told you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And the moment Peter reached out and got him by his hand, he transferred power from his body into that body. And the Bible says immediately his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and leaping and shouting and praising God for what God did in his life. Here's a man that wanted money, but he got a healing. Are you listening to me? 
As you go on down and read this third chapter, this man went into the prayer service and broke it up. They were in there praying, Oh Lord, have mercy Jesus. Oh Lord, oh, have mercy Lord. Don't that sound like a Pentecostal prayer meeting? <laughs> and here comes a beggar off the street. And some of those people that were praying put money in that man's bucket. And they're looking at him and said, what in the world happened to him? And he said, them two laid hands on me. God healed me just outside the door. They had more power outside the church than they had on the inside the church. Come on now, shout with me. And this man went in there and broke up a prayer meeting. And he said, You hung him on a cross. You crucified him. His name is Jesus. You left the murderer go free. And you hung Jesus on the cross. Put him in a grave, but the grave couldn't hold him. But on the third day, he came out of the grave. And he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he said, His name, through faith in His name, has given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. What is the name? Jesus! Shout it out loud! Jesus! I'm talking about healing power. And you have it within you as a believer. This is the point that I want to stress. You don't have to run around the country to get a preacher to lay hands on you. If you're a child of God, you have that resurrection power right on the inside of you. He said, Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Can you shout praise the Lord, somebody? Talking about Holy Ghost power. The name of Jesus is what brings it alive. Peter had the power of the Holy Ghost. Now don't turn the radio off. Keep it on. Some of you folks don't like the talking in tongues. Because I get mail from you. But I want you to know before you can heal the sick, you've got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is for every Baptist. The Holy Ghost is for every Methodist. It's for every person. These signs shall follow them that believe. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can you shout praise the Lord with me somebody? God is looking for an army of believers today that will go forth and use that name. An army is being raised up in this final hour. An army of believers who's not ashamed of the name of Jesus. Going into the hospitals and into the nursing homes. You don't have to have a preacher's license in your pocket. All you've got to do is be filled with the Holy Ghost and not be ashamed of the name of Jesus and lay hands on the sick and you're going to see them recover in this last hour of time. How many of you want to be used of God? Raise both hands and shout, Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I'm trying to emphasizing this particular point because there's other places in the scripture where he says, If there's any sick among you, let him call for the elder of the church. The church should be the healing station. God has many ways of healing the sick. He sent His Word and healed them. He uses oil and He heals them. I don't care how He does it, but I'm emphasizing this as every believer. Every one of you that are a believer, God wants you to get in this particular business of laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. If you believe it, shout Amen. amen. Mark chapter 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe. 
in my name shall they cast out devils. And I'll stop there now. In my name shall they cast out devils. Most believers that I run into are afraid of the devil. Don't you look at me like that. The name of Jesus is a delivering name. Not only does it deliver from sickness, but it delivers from devils. In my name you shall cast out devils. Acts 16 and 18. Paul came across a certain woman by the name of Lydia, a seller of purple, in the city of Thyatira. She worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Listen. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. That's the devil talking. Listen to verse 18. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her! And he came out the self same hour. The name of Jesus Christ expels demons. And if you're a child of God, you have no business being afraid of a devil. I'll never forget some years ago I went to New York to preach. I went for a month. I rented this theater for a whole month and stayed 16 weeks and had a revival. One person came from a spiritualist church who had a medium as a pastor, a woman. And I cast the devil out of her and set her free. She went and got four more and I cast the devil out of them and they went and got 26 more. And I cast the devil out of them and they went and got 38 more. Until I set the whole church free. And one night while I was going out of a service, a madam in a bandana type thing around her head and all kind of things around her neck stopped me and said, Hold it! Are you the preacher? I said, sure am. She said, I hate you. I said, I recognize your voice, devil. I hate you too. So that makes us evil. I wasn't talking to the woman. I was talking to the devil. Then the woman spoke and she said, you ruined me. I said, I don't even know who you are. She said, my name is Madam So-and-so. She said, I had my people in the palm of my hand and you set them free. He said, preacher, I'm going to kill you. I said, how can you kill a dead man? I said, I'm already crucified. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth within me. Before you get to me, you got to get by Jesus. Can you shout amen, somebody? She said, nevertheless, I'm going to put you on guard right now. I'm going to bake you a pie. And I'm going to dress it. I said, do me a favor, madam. Make it coconut custard, will you? Do you know where I'm living? 
right in the 16th chapter. He said, if you eat or drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Because I got the name that's above every name. It's the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Raise your hands and holler amen, somebody. The lady in my church, she come to me crying, oh, Brother Shelma. She said, I got one of them root workers living next door to me. <laughs> and she's sprinkling powder out on my front doorstep. What am I going to do? I said, take your socks and shoes off and get in the powder in the name of Jesus. Let the devil know they ain't nothing can touch you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and tell somebody I've got more power than the devil. Than the devil. Yeah, got more power than the devil. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Listen to me, beloved. When Jesus gave power to the 70, it says they come back rejoicing. And they said, even the devils are subject to us. Oh, hallelujah. They had it in the early church. Jesus gave those people authority over the devil. And I want you to know He never took the authority away. The authority is still in the church. And if you are a child of God, you've got power over the devil to put him where he belongs. And that's right under your feet. Shout yes, yeah, somebody. I'll never forget my father-in-law has a hunting camp up in the mountains of Pennsylvania. He wanted me to go up there and spend some time with him. I went one day. Couldn't take it over a day. I like people. I don't like squirrels. I went out into the woods. I couldn't preach to rabbits and deers. But in that little town, there was a circus that set up. And I saw these three balls hanging outside of a woman's tent. Fortune told. Some of you listen to the broadcast know what I'm talking about. Fortune telling demons. They live right here in your city. When I was walking towards that tent, I saw her eyes fix on mine. She started to back into the tent the closer I got. And all of a sudden she spoke up and she said, I know you, you man of God! And ducked inside the curtain. I parked right outside. I stood there. And I said, you devil, you ain't telling no fortunes tonight. I said, you've been tormenting the people of God. Now I'm going to torment you tonight. You ain't going to make no money tonight telling no fortunes. Because I'm going to stand guard out here at the door. And if you show your face, I'm going to cast the devil out of you. I want you to know God's given every one of us power. Power to cast out and put them where they belong right under your feet he said you shall tread upon scorpions and upon serpents in my name you shall cast out devils can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me people don't like to hear this but I'm going to preach it anyhow Mark chapter 16 says and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. There's power in the name of Jesus. In that name that's above every name, we are guaranteed of His presence every time that we meet. Because we are assembled here not in the name of a church body. We're not assembled here in the name of a denomination. We're not assembled here in the name of the Democratic or the Republican Party. But we are assembled here in the name of... Oh, I like that. In the name of Jesus. Somebody said to me one day, Shambach! 
do you know Jesus is here? I said, I brought him with me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the age. Jesus is here. You may not be able to see Him, but He is here. Sometimes you can't feel Him, but He's still there. But we have an extra blessing tonight. We can feel Him here tonight. Just turn around and look at somebody and say, Jesus is in the house. We are guaranteed His presence. Listen to me, beloved. God doesn't put it in the majority. But God works with the minority. He said wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Some of you are here tonight because you need something special from God. God specializes in special miracles. And he's here tonight. I'm not talking about the preacher. I said Jesus is here. And he'll give you the desire of your heart. I saw God do something special out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A coal miner who had both of his eyes blown out in a coal mine disaster. Nothing there but empty sockets. But when hands were taken from his eyes... I saw two brand new eyes created in the man's socket. Why? Because Jesus is here. These people that got out of wheelchairs the other night is an evident sign that Jesus is here. The young man who had deaf ears and he could not talk when he began to hear and speak is an evident sign that Jesus is here. Can you shout amen somebody? Hallelujah! And I want you to know He's here tonight to minister to the need of every soul that's in need of a miracle. And God's going to give you the desire of your heart. Hallelujah. What is it you have need of? Does your home need to be put back together again? If you need a miracle in your home, I can lay hands on you and say, Holy Ghost, sick the one that moved out. Put a hook in their jaw and knock them down and drag them back to the responsibility. And God knows how to restore. He is a restorer. He'll deliver you from drug addiction. He'll deliver you from alcohol. He'll set you free from sin. Regardless of what your need is. Some of you are here tonight dying with a cancer. But He is a cancer specialist. And He will set you free and give you new organs in your body. Can you shout amen? Because of the name that's above every name. What is his name? Jesus. Shout it out now. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Now in chapter 12 of Romans it says, We have received a measure of faith. That's just a measure of faith. In John 3, 34, it says, Jesus received the Spirit without measure. In John 20, 20, 20, 21, He says, So send I you. John 14, 12 says, The works, not only these works shall you do, but greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. Now I just want to quote these scriptures enough to challenge you as a believer. That I believe that when you receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost on your life, you get the same thing that Jesus had. I want you to know this. Somebody says, I'll get it with a measure. No. Jesus said, the works that I do, shall you do also. And not only these works shall you do, but greater works. And if you have to do the same works Jesus did, and greater works than He did, then you've got to have the same anointing that He had on His life. Oh, hallelujah. Now, some of you may not like this, and you may feel like it might be sacrilege, but just bear with me a little bit. 
the little woman that pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. If you remember the story, I read it in the Greek text. And it says she drew virtue out of him. Jesus felt in his body the virtue departing. The word virtue, the word power, means, coming from a Greek word, it means dunamos. We get the English word dynamite. It said dunamos, uh, let me use the Greek term, dunamos went out of him into the woman's body. The one who had an issue of blood. And Jesus stopped preaching and he said, Who touched me? Peter said, Who touched you? They all got their hands on you, Lord. He said, I know it. But somebody touched me with faith. He said, I felt the virtue. I felt it go out of me. And the woman came and fell down at his feet. Hear me. Anybody had the gift of healing, Jesus had it. If anybody had the gift of miracles, Jesus had it. But he didn't say, my gift made you whole. He said, woman, thy faith. Thy faith. You have it. Your faith has made you whole. You have something on the inside of you that drew out the dunamos. It drew out the power. It drew out the dynamite. It drew out the virtue. And you are healed because of your faith. Now, when Jesus told His disciples to go to Jerusalem and tarry, He said, you shall receive power. I dare you to look it up in the Greek tense. You know what it says? When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive dunamos. Oh. Translate it any way you want to. Translate it any way you want to. Dynamite, virtue, power, dunamos. But let me put it this way. What went out of Jesus when it healed that little woman came into you when you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? The same thing. Mm, don't that send chill bumps up and down your spine? The same power, the same energy, the same virtue, the same dunamos, dynamite. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you got the same thing Jesus got. And I want you to take the limit off of God. And I want you to go from here claiming a double portion. Not, it's not enough just to have what your pastor had or what your friend had. But you can go on beyond them and say, Lord, I want something that they've just been dreaming about. Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, if you see me when I'm taken away, you've got it. And I've come to tell you, it's possible for you. Take the limit off by laying hands on the sick. The last time I was here, I was preaching right here where I am tonight. And I think it's fitting because the people heard me mention this on the radio. Walking right down this aisle came a woman from New Orleans with a sheet right over her shoulder. Walked down this aisle and dropped it right here at my feet. I wonder what in the world has she got in that sack? And I didn't have to wait too long because she unfurled it and there lay a man. 67 pounds of skin and bones. And as soon as she opened that sheet, the stench almost knocked me out and I knew he was dying with cancer. I said, my God, woman, what are you doing with that man? She said, Brother Shambach, I drove all night from New Orleans. Now do what God called you to do and heal that man. I said, what? She said, I ain't got time now. She said, the doctors just gave him 72 hours to live. Now, do your thing. 72 hours. She said, the doctor, I sat in his office and he says, you can't take him. She said, I'm going to take him to the man of God. He's in Houston. 
He said, no, you're not. Your husband's going to die. She said, doctor, I don't like to argue with you, but the devil is a liar. My husband ain't going to die. My husband's going to live because God is going to heal him. She brought that husband in an automobile, brother. Came the whole way in an automobile in a sheet. The doctor said, I won't let you sign your husband out. She said, I have the right to do it. The doctor said, I'll hide his clothes. She said, I'll steal the sheet. Faith always finds a way. She stole the sheet off that hospital bed. And I had him laying right here where I'm standing right now. And I couldn't even stand to look at him because the stench would have, it would have knocked me out. I cursed the cancer in the name of Jesus. Commanded it to die and pass from his body. And when I got done praying, I said, woman, get him out of here. He's healed. She said, thank you, Brother Shambach. I'll see you when you get to New Orleans. Picked him up, put him right back over her shoulder and drove back. Six months later, I put my tent up in New Orleans. And up comes this big old man walking on the platform back to his normal weight of 210 pounds wearing a brand new suit. The doctors pronounced him cured of cancer because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The same power that Jesus has, you have it. You can put it to work. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you can have a double portion of that power. Do you want it? Do you want it? Shout yes! Continuing in this 78th Psalm, using this as a text, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not His hand, and I want to encourage every one of God's people to take the limit off of God, not only financially, but moving into another realm, not only as far as the anointing is concerned, I believe that's where I closed last night. Many people limit God as far as the anointing is concerned, but the anointing destroys the yoke. Every yoke of bondage that the devil can come up with, God has made a provision for the deliverance of that individual through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now another word that I want to use, you as a believer are clothed with authority. And I like that word authority. And I want you to move with me into a new realm where we can take the limit off and use the authority that God has invested in every one of us as a believer. The 16th chapter of Mark is the chapter that the modernists are trying to get rid of. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe in my name shall they speak with new tongues. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. In my name they shall take up serpents. And in my name they shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. God has given a certain authority to every one of us who are the children of God. Authority. When I use the word authority, that means that you can learn how to vocalize that authority. The voice of authority. You come to a place where you don't even have to wrestle with devils anymore. But all you got to do is speak the word and they will be made whole. And the devils will come out. When God called me to preach, He called me to lay hands on the sick. But God spoke to my heart in prayer one day years ago. And He said to me, Son, the time will come in your ministry when you won't have to lay your hands on the people but you will speak the word only and they will be made whole now that's authority and I believe if we take the limit off of God that we can exercise that authority there was a certain captain in the Roman army two bars on his shoulders who had a servant that was sick And he came to Jesus and he said, Master, I have a servant at home that is sick. 
Jesus said, I'll go home with you and heal him. He said, no, sir. He said, I'm not worthy for you to enter my house. He said, Lord, you don't have to come to my house. Stand right here where you are. He said, look, I recognize the authority you have. He said, I'm a man under authority. See this Roman soldier? I'm a captain. I have men under me. I say to one man, come here and he comes. I tell another one to go and he goes. I tell another one, do this and he does it. Because they recognize the authority of that uniform. He said, Master, I recognize your authority. When you tell blind eyes to open, they come open. When you tell deaf ears to unstop, they pop open. When you tell the lame to walk, they get up and start walking. He said, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house, but stand right here where you are and speak the word only, and I know that my servant will be made whole. Did he say so? Hallelujah! How would you like to learn how to speak the word and see things take place? You have it. The authority that Jesus had, he has given it to you as a believer. Mm. I'm losing some of you now. Say, ah, oh, Brother Shambach, I don't know about that. But if you can just learn how to vocalize that faith. I mentioned today in the morning service, I mentioned something and it sort of grabbed me. It just grabbed me. And, and I had to put a whole point on this particular aspect of it. Elijah the prophet. Here's a man that stood before King Ahab and he says, There will be no more rain for the next seven years. According to my word, there will be no rain until I tell it to rain. Oh. And when I said that this morning, it grabbed me right around the fifth rib. And I said, Lord, give me that kind of authority. Wouldn't it be wonderful to stand before a tornado and say, In the name of Jesus, stop in your tracks. Woo! Stand in front of a hurricane with winds up to 120 miles an hour and say, in the name of Jesus, i stop it. I'm talking about authority. Somebody said, I didn't know we can do this. Uh -uh. We've been too busy playing church. Don't you all get mad at me now. I said, we've been too busy playing church. But I believe it's about time we learn how to put this authority to work. And let the devil know that there's a people of God that moved into a new realm of faith where we're going to take God at His Word and believe what He said. Can you shout praise the Lord? Now this is all Old Testament. This is why it shakes me up. We're living in New Testament. But there was a man by the name of Joshua. Joshua needed some more time. Did you ever get to a place where you needed more time? What'd you do? You stayed up. And all Joshua did was look up to that son and said, Son, stand still. And that son didn't have a bit of sense, but do what the man of God said do. Now you that study astronomy, you know what happened. The earth stood still, the moon and the earth, and also the, the sun. It stopped at the command of that man of God. God is so concerned about His people that when you speak the Word, God is going to stand behind that thing and see that it's carried out. As a man of God, when I come against a cancer-ridden patient and that foul devil of cancer has been eating away at the body, I look at that thing and I say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I curse your power. I command you to die. Pass from the body in the name of Jesus. And you know what happens? The cancer obeys my word. Because I'm under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I'm taking the authority that God has given me. He said, whatever you loose on earth, I will loose it in heaven. And whatever I bind on earth, I'll, He'll bind it in heaven. That's what the Bible says. 
when I lay hands on somebody that's in bondage, I say, Satan, loose here. Now that devil ain't going to loose because I said it. But I wait. I say, go ahead, Lord. Because he said, whatever I loose on earth, he loses it in heaven. And Jesus says, devil, did you hear what Shambach said? Now loose here. And the devil says, he sends a message down to his old foul spirit and says, you got to turn loose. Not because Shambach said, but Jesus said so. And that's why I like to loose you here, and Jesus looses you there. And then I turn around and bind the devil here, and Jesus binds him there. The trouble with us preachers today, we've been binding the people and loosing the devil. But we're going to turn it around, and we're going to bind the devil and loose the people and set you free by the power of the living Christ. We're going to take the limit off and put this authority to work. Everybody raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me, will you? Hallelujah! Psalm 78. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And they remembered not His hand. Taking the limit off. Not only to exercise the authority that God has invested in His children, but God has given us authority even over the animals. Oh. Everything that was ever made, God intended for man to have dominion over it. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Say, give me an illustration, Brother Shambach. All right. Peter was a fisherman. Now, nobody knew fish like old Peter. You don't tell a fisherman how to fish. Isn't that right? He knows how to fish. Especially if you're a preacher. You just tend to preach and leave my fishing alone. And Peter and his men were out in the boat all night long and they caught nothing. Is that right? Just like some of y'all fishermen. Catch nothing, call yourself fishermen. They come out of that boat all tired and exhausted and soaked and wet and here comes a preacher by the name of Jesus. And you know what he said to them? Go on back out and cast your net out on the other side of the boat. And I, who does he think he is? I'm the fisherman. I caught multitudes of boatloads of fish while he ain't never been out on no boat. Ain't no preacher telling me what to do. Oh yeah, there's folks like that today. Don't turn that radio off now. Leave it on. Peter was exhausted. He was tired. Now you listen to this. This will thrill your soul. Jesus, now they don't know this, but he's the creator. He's the one that made them fish. Oh, yes, he did. And Peter said, Lord, we've toiled all night long. And I mean, when you're out on a boat all night long trying to fish, you're tired. And we've caught nothing. But this is what I like. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. There it is. There's the key. Nevertheless, at thy word, we will go out and we'll let down the net. Because you said so. He said it. He spoke it. That's the authority that you even have over fish. And when he put that boat out to sea and threw that net down, the fish jumped right into the net. You call that fishing? The fish jumped right into the net. They couldn't even pull the whole net load of fish in. They had to call the other ships that were around and said, Come on and help us. There's enough for everybody. Hallelujah. Even the fish are subject to the power of God. Can you raise your hands and shout amen, somebody? And another thing that I preached this morning. The man of God, Elijah, laying there by a brook. After he spoke that word and said, there'll be no more rain. 
And the rain stopped. And he was lying there on his back right next to a brook and God sent a raven. Even the birds are subject to you. And every day, like clockwork, he could set his watch by it twice a day, in the morning and in the evening, here comes the raven. And he flies right where the man of God is and drops a quarter pounder right in his lap. Didn't even have to go get in line for it. Didn't have to stand at McDonald's or Jack in the Box. But the raven come. The, the bird came and just dropped it in his lap. Every morning and every night, twice a night, the bird brought food and sustenance to the man of God. Even the fowls of the air are subject to a man of God. Oh, this makes me want to holler a little bit. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! But we've got to take the limit off of God. You don't know what power you have. You don't know what God has invested in you. He said, in my name, you shall take up serpents. That doesn't mean you can go out and handle rattlesnakes, but that means you can handle the old serpent, the devil, and you can put him where he belongs. And that's right under your feet. This is what God has promised you, that you shall tread upon scorpions and upon serpents. Can you raise your hands and shout, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, every time I read this, it thrills my soul. They turned back. They tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Do you notice? Do you remember when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem? Before He rode in, He told his, two of His disciples, He said, go into a certain town. I got any horsemen in my audience? Any of you know horses? Now listen. Jesus said, you'll find a certain coat. Nobody's ever rode him before. And I'd hate to be the first one on that animal, wouldn't you, brother? Okay, now you're a horseman now. Jesus said, you'll find a coat tied, the foal of an ass. Loose him and bring him to me. And if any man asks you what you're doing, you just say, the Lord hath need of him. Now this is a sermon in itself. That's not what I'm trying to bring out today, but that's why God sent me to your city. Because you've been tied up and I come to loose you. And if anybody asks me what I'm doing, I'm saying, the Lord hath need of you. God can use you tied up, you see, so I come to set you free so God can use you and bring deliverance to somebody right here in this city. Can you shout praise the Lord? But I want you to see that every phase of your living, God has given you authority. Jesus takes that coat, that coat whereon no man ever sat. That can be a wild one, can't it, brother? All right. All Jesus did was sit on that thing, and it didn't buck, but it just went in like a dog. Right into Jerusalem, and Jesus was right on his back. And they were strawing things in the way, and they were crying, Hail to the King! Hosanna! Hosanna! Jesus going into Jerusalem. Even an animal that a man never rode was completely subdued because God expects every one of His children to exercise the authority and the power that He has invested in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Holy Ghost on your life. This is what you have. And then people say to me, Do I need the Holy Ghost? This opens a whole avenue of blessing to you as a believer. Some people thought the Holy Ghost was just to talk in tongues. But I want you to know that's just the evidence that you've got the Holy Ghost. God wants you to put it to work in every phase of your living. You can put the Holy Ghost to work on the job. You can put the Holy Ghost to work in the home. You can put it to work in your mind, in your soul, in your body. Because He said, greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah! I'm talking about a God that's given us authority even over the fowls of the air. Over the animals of creation that you and I might have dominion. 
Hallelujah. Man lost control of this when sin entered into the world. But when Jesus died on Calvary, He brought us back into the family of God. And I believe it's about time we move into that position. Beloved, we are the sons of God. And God expects His children to act like His sons. Can you shout Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! I made up my mind. I want everything God has for me. I'm tired of taking handouts. I'm getting tired of getting in prayer lines. I'm going to get everything God's promised me. And I'm going to lay claim to the promise. It is mine. And I'm going to hold on to the horns of the altar until I possess it. I want to be a possessor of my inheritance. How many of you want everything God's promised you? Turn around and tell somebody. Say, it's mine. And I claim it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! I am reading from the third chapter of Acts, verse number 16. I'm using this as a text. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him, hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I'm going to deal with this particular verse of Scripture that I read. I read the whole thing to my audience tonight that are under this tent, but you that are watching by television... I'm just using the one verse as a text, so I would like to suggest to you that you read from the very first verse of this third chapter of the book of Acts. This is the first miracle that we find recorded in the book of Acts as far as healing is concerned. Jesus had already ascended to heaven. He was taken out from the midst of his own disciples and he gave them a command instead of going out to publish the good news that Jesus is not dead but he is alive he gave them a command that they should go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father and he told his disciples you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea and all Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. And this miracle took place in Jerusalem right outside the temple. After these disciples, there were 120 of them in the upper room. Now you will find in the book of Corinthians when Paul the apostle is writing to the church at Corinth saying that the resurrection of Christ was witnessed not only of the disciples but also of above 500 brethren. At one time they saw the resurrected Christ. But only a hundred and twenty of them obeyed his command and went into the upper room to wait for the promise of the Father. Think about it. What happened to the other three hundred and eighty? Are you listening to me? That's another message. But only a hundred and twenty of them obeyed his command and went to the upper room and they witnessed the advent of the church when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Everybody say fire. Fire. Holy Ghost and fire. And he commanded them to go there and wait until they were filled. And then they would be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem. Now, to you and me, that means home plate, home base. That means where you live. Hear me, mama. That means in your home. That means in your house, that means on your job, that God wants you to be a witness right there where you are. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Peter and John were walking into the temple at Jerusalem. 
being the hour of prayer when they saw this man who was lame from his mama's womb. He never walked upright. He never walked. He was a hopeless cripple. He was begging for alms. His mother put him outside that temple door. And the people that were going into the temple, they were accosted by this man with his tin cup, begging for alms, alms for the cripple. And I dare say everyone that went into the church, everyone that went into the temple, gave him something when they went into that temple. And Peter and John, these are men who were in the upper room just the other day. And they walked by this same man and the man held his cup up and said, alms for the cripple, alms for the poor. And Peter and John walked right on by him. When all of a sudden they stopped. And I can picture Peter turning to John and saying, hold it, John. What is this we got a hold of the other day? And John said, Holy Ghost. Well, how come we left this man back here then? Let's go back and give him what we got. Oh, I like this. Hear me, church. This is what God expects from every one of us. When they went back to the man, Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none. what you want but I got what you need oh hallelujah silver and gold have I none but what I have I give this should be the watchword of the church what I have I give hear me don't you turn that television dial the church can't say this today The church today, their coffers are filled. They have money. They can't say silver and gold have I none. And they also can't say in the name of Jesus rise up and walk. Peter and John said, I don't have what you want, but I have what you need. And that's what we're doing here in Coney Island. I may not have what you want, but I have what you need. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. What I have, I give. What I have, I give. What do you have? What did you receive from the Lord? You received power. When you got the Holy Ghost, you received power. Jesus said, the works that I, that the works that I do shall you do also. But not only these works, but greater works shall you do. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Do you know why some churches don't lay hands on the sick? Because they don't have anything to give. I've had preachers say to me, I don't have anything in my hands. I said, then don't put them on me. I come to town to tell you, I have something in my hands. I've got something in my feet. I've got something in me. It is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He lives in me. And what I have, I give to you. Hallelujah. If you're here today as a sinner, you're going to walk out a saint. If you come in here blind, you're going to walk out seeing. If you come in here a deaf mute, you're going to walk out of here hearing. And you're going to walk out talking. If you're a cripple, get ready to get out of that wheelchair and push it out of here. Because what I have, I give. So yes. I'm talking to you believers now. I'm talking to you Pentecostal people, you that talk in tongues. God didn't call you just to have you go around talking in tongues all the time. He wants you to put that power to work. He wants you to go out into the streets, into the highways, into the byways, into the hospitals. And what you have, give it to somebody else. Silver and gold have I none. But 
but I have a gift in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk Peter and John explaining and this is my text and he's trying to explain to these people what is it it's not our holiness It's not our power. But he says, it's his name. Through faith in his name. Hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Raise your hands and shout amen. Amen. just digress a moment and tell you when God performs a miracle you don't have to go behind closed doors you can get it right out in the open so somebody else can see that God is not dead but he is alive if you believe it shout amen with me I'm reading from the third chapter of Acts And I'm using as a text this 16th verse. And his name. What is his name? Jesus. I can't hear you. Jesus. Say it out loud. Jesus. His name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Look on us. Peter and John said. Look on us. I believe that this is what God established the church for. He put us in the community so that world can look on us. We have something that the world does not possess. We have your answer. The church has the answer. Look on us. What a strange preface. If only a coin would follow. Oh no, but a flicker of hope was kindled. Expectation and receptivity were being stirred in this man. That dying world out there don't want your sympathy. They're looking for hope. This is why we stretch this tent here in Coney Island in the heart of Brooklyn. To let the world know we have a hope to give you. The doctors may say you're going to die. But I've come to tell you, you shall live and not die. Hallelujah. Your back may be against the wall, but I've come to tell you that now God is going to take over and He will make a way where there is no way. Silver and gold have I none. I'm so glad that's in the book. Peter avows what most men are ashamed of. They try to hide it. If you don't have any money, you don't want people to know it. But Peter and John boldly announced to him, I don't have what you want, but I got what you need. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The magnificent boldness of Peter rolls out his master's name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. A faltering voice is unworthy to speak such a name. And if you do not carry the holy boldness of God, you'll speak the name in vain. I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. I said I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. take his name in vain but I'm not ashamed to lay hands on people on a sidewalk and lay hands on them and say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk there's power in that name 
what gave this man perfect soundness. The power of that name. It's not a collection of letters which are spelled J E S U S like somebody would lead a cheer when they say give me a J give me an E give me an S give me a U give me another S it's not a collection of words that are magical are you listening to me but this is a name that was given that's above every other name hallelujah this is a condensed definition the name of God that's equivalent to that which God is manifested to be the name of Jesus in Jewish literature the name came to be a reverential synonym for God himself worthy to suffer shame for the name missionaries described as going forth for one reason for the sake of the name what is the name the name of Jesus the name is representation or the embodiment of that which Christ has declared to be for us his name through faith in his name hath given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all I am reading from the third chapter of Acts and I'm using as a text just a portion of the 16th verse and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all the power of the name and how you and I can operate the power of that name it's one thing to tell somebody there's power in that name but it's another thing to show them how to operate it what gives that name power his name hear it his name what is his name Jesus. say it out loud Jesus. his name Jesus. through faith in his name this is the missing link some men use that name in a curse and it's always on their lips is that right but when we come under this tent or we go in to minister to somebody his name through faith in his name the missing link hath given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all it's not some hocus pocus waving a wand in the name of Jesus oh no there's something you have to do now I'm going to put the responsibility on you don't turn the television dial the devil has you running all over the country you found out a woman had a gift a man had a gift somebody had a vision of the Virgin Mary you run here you run there and you're still not well his name through faith in his name and you must provide the faith if you are going to receive a miracle when that name is used can you raise your hands and shout amen with me now I've come to town to tell you the responsibility does not rest on me because I have come to preach his name and use his name but you are going to have to believe something through 
faith in his name. It says, this man who was a hopeless cripple was expecting to receive something from them. Now, he might have been expecting some money, but he was expecting. There was a spirit of expectancy. Most of us, when we come to church, we sit in that upholstered pew and I wonder when he's going to heal. If you can't holler amen, holler ouch. Now let's get this thing straight right now. I couldn't heal a flea if it had a headache. I am nothing but a vessel filled with God who commanded me to lay hands on the sick. And he said, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if they have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Can you shout amen with me? Man's trust, I'm trying to tell you, you've got to learn how to trust God. The word trust is an Old Testament word. The New Testament word is faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. And if I'm faithful to preach the word of God, then I believe that faith will come alive in your heart and you will be the recipient of God's miracle working power. I've seen people get up out of wheelchairs while I preach. There's power in the word. I said there's power in the word. It produces the necessary faith that you need that will produce the miracle in your life. Now Peter had faith or he never would have laid hands on him. He gave only what he received through faith. He said what I have, I give. I can give you nothing more than what I have received through faith. Are you listening to me? Let not the praise be given to the water. Let, let all the praise rather. Let all the praise be given to the water and none to the cup. We're nothing but the vessel. But it's what we have on the inside. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. I believe God. I said I believe God. I believe God. I believe when I lay hands on you and I use the name of Jesus. I believe that resurrection power comes alive in your body. And if I can get you to believe that you'll walk out of here a brand new person if you come in here a sinner and believe with me you'll walk out of here a saint tonight will be your night hallelujah hallelujah I said hallelujah 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 faith in the name the medium of healing must have faith in the name his name through faith in his name believe what you preach preacher I heard the story of a politician who got up to speak and you have politicians right here in New York City one man said that politician will go far because he believes every word he says and that's the condition always of getting other people to believe us faith is contagious if you want other people to believe then believe yourself hallelujah don't stand up behind a pulpit and let people know what you don't believe. Tell them what you do believe. The greatest need in Christianity today is not to teach or instruct men, but men need to be impressed. Most of us have convictions that are lying dormant in our brains that need to be awakened to revolutionize our lives. There's something deep within you that you believe, but you need to have it brought to life. I'll never forget as a young man, I was attending Bible college. 
And I was being instructed in the classroom. But I heard of a young man who was conducting a tent meeting in Reading, Pennsylvania, just about 30 miles from where I was going to school. And you know what I heard? I heard that the man was opening blind eyes and unstopping deaf ears and making the lame to walk. And his name was T.L. Osborne. And you know what I did? I went down there just to watch what he was doing. And I saw him call for a blind man that I knew personally. A young man who was in the fight game, who was pushed too fast, and he became blind in both of his eyes. And Brother Osborne called him down and brought him before the people. Now if that was me at that time, I'd have prayed for him behind the curtain. But he brought him out in front of everybody, in front of God, and in front of the devil. And he said, Lord, you said if I lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. So he puts his fingers in the eyes and says, I come against the blind spirit in the name of Jesus. You blind spirit, come out of the man. And when he took his hands from his eyes, the young man started to run around the tent shouting, I can see, I can see, I can see. I was impressed by the gospel of demonstration. Hear me, preacher. God not only called you to preach this gospel, he called you to demonstrate this gospel. If you can't demonstrate it in the church, get out on the sidewalk. Can you shout amen? Go to the boardwalk and lay hands on people in the name of Jesus. And God will confirm it with his power. Raise your hands and shout amen. This is my night. I said, this is my night. This is my night for a miracle. I said, this is my night for a miracle. I'm reading from the third chapter of Acts. And I'll bring it to a close now. Verse number 16. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. Whom you see and know. His name. Through faith in his name. This last point I want to try to impress you with. Is the effects. Of the power of this name. When you use that name. In full assurance of faith. What God will do. The effects of it. When you use that name in all of its power, it'll make the lame walk. Let me get down here where you are. Mama, I'm so glad you came tonight. They had to push you in in a wheelchair. And whoever it was that pushed you in, they're going to get in it and you're going to push them out. And I come down to where you are, son. You say, but you don't know what's the matter. I don't care what's the matter with you. I come, what I have, I give to you tonight. You say, but I haven't walked in 20 years. I don't care how long. I don't care if you were born in that thing. Jesus is in the house. Here's a man that you brought in blind. Is that right? What would you do if he started hollering, I can see? Would that get you a little bit happy? Would you lose all composure and say, oh, glory to God, I know you will. Here's another little woman. You see that white cane? Six inches of red. That means she's blind. How long have you been blind, Mama? Three years. Three years. Is it glaucoma? Glaucoma and diabetes. And sugar diabetes. When I pray for you tonight, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to curse the sugar in your bloodstream. And I'm going to command the sugar diabetes to come out of your bloodstream. 
I'm going to command the glaucoma to come out of your eyes. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to see this white man preaching the gospel tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you that are watching by television, you've been given up by medical science. Cancer has fastened itself on your body. There's no hope. But I bring you hope. I come with one thing. And that's the name of Jesus. And if I can get you to believe and have faith in that name. The same thing will happen to you. With what happened to that man I was preaching about in the third chapter of Acts. You're diseased or you're afflicted. You're going to walk out of here a brand new person. I said you're going to walk out a brand new person. I tell you this by the authority of God's eternal word. Let every man, let every devil be a liar. But let God be true. If he said it, he'll do it. If he's spoken, he will bring it to pass. Right there in your home, in the name of Jesus, I come against sin. I come against sickness. I come against disease. I come against cancer. I come against AIDS. I curse that power on your life in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. I command it in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and praise Him, everybody. Praise Him. Every one of you that are watching. Raise your hands right there in your home and begin to praise it. The name of Jesus. At the mention of that name, every knee has to bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Receive your miracle. Oh, please do me a favor. Dial that number on your screen and tell me what God has done in your life the anointing of God that has destroyed that yoke and I can call it your miracle in Jesus name everybody raise both hands and praise him